Frontline Updates, where we delve deep into military strategies and updates from conflict zones. Today, we're discussing the progress of the ongoing special military operation as of July 8, 2024. I'm your host, Sharifa Mohammed MGT. I'm Colonel A.C. Ogentoy, an infantry officer. Strategic Strikes The Russian Armed Forces executed a group strike with long-range precision weaponry targeting key Ukrainian military industrial infrastructure and aviation bases in response to attempts by Kyiv to damage Russian infrastructure. The strikes were reported as successful, hitting all assigned targets. Welcome to the Frontline Updates podcast. We're joined by Colonel A.C. Ogontoya, who will provide us with an update on the special military operation as of July 8th, 2024. Colonel, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's crucial to communicate the realities of our operations clearly. Colonel, let's begin with this morning's operations. Can you elaborate on the targets and outcomes of the group strikes carried out by the Russian armed forces? Absolutely. This morning, in response to attempts by the Kyiv regime to damage our infrastructure, we conducted precise long-range strikes targeting the Ukrainian military industrial infrastructure and aviation bases. These strikes were meticulously planned and executed, successfully engaging all intended targets. This operation was crucial to impairing the Ukrainian military capabilities. There have been claims about civilian facilities being targeted. What is your response to these allegations? Those allegations are false. The destruction reported in Kyiv was actually caused by a Ukrainian air defense missile. It's important to note that such claims have surfaced repeatedly, especially before significant international meetings involving their NATO patrons. We see this as a tactic to garner sympathy and funding. Moving to the ground operations, could you detail the activities and successes of the North Group of Forces? The North Group has been active near Vesilovka, Basavka, and Konstantinovka. We have effectively engaged the 115th Mechanized Brigade and two Territorial Defense Brigades, repelling three counterattacks by the Ukrainian 92nd Assault Brigade. Our operations resulted in the elimination of 260 Ukrainian troops and the destruction of several vehicles and a key artillery system. What about the advances made by the West Group of Forces? In the West, our forces have taken more advantageous positions and inflicted significant damage near Stelmakovka and Ardiomovka. We've dealt with the 103rd Territorial Defense and the 1st National Guard Brigades, causing over 495 Ukrainian casualties and destroying multiple armored vehicles and ammunition depots. How has the situation evolved in the southern and central operational areas? In the south, our troops have improved the frontline conditions near Konstantinovka and Belogorovka, targeting the 72nd Mechanized and 80th Air Assault Brigades. We've inflicted over 570 Ukrainian troop casualties. In the center, our forces have enhanced tactical positions and successfully repelled multiple Ukrainian counterattacks near Rozovka and Novgorodskoy, resulting in substantial enemy losses. Can you comment on the role of your air defense and artillery during these operations? Our air defense and artillery have been highly effective. Just today, we neutralized three Yamars launchers, downed multiple guided bombs and Yamars projectiles, and destroyed numerous UAVs. These systems are pivotal in maintaining our operational integrity and security. Colonel, could you provide an overview of the total impact of the operation so far? Since the start of the operation, we have destroyed 626 airplanes, 277 helicopters, over 27,000 UAVs, and thousands of armored vehicles and artillery systems. Our forces remain committed to achieving our strategic objectives while minimizing civilian impact and maintaining high standards of precision in our engagements. And finally, can you touch on the overall impact of these operations as presented in the briefing? Well, generally, the cumulative effects of the ongoing operations, as detailed in the reports, show a concerted effort to weaken Ukraine's military response and fortify Russian positions. This could have long-term implications for the conflict dynamics in the region, potentially influencing diplomatic negotiations and future engagements. Colonel Oguntoye, thank you for these detailed insights. Your updates provide a clear picture of the extensive scope of operations and their strategic impacts. Thank you for giving me the platform to share our perspective. 
it's important that the international community hears a comprehensive account of these events. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Join us next time as we continue to provide up-to-date coverage on global military affairs. Stay with us for more updates and expert analyses on global defense and security issues. Stay informed, stay secure. Thank you. And the talks on Gaza was a ruse. Israeli attacks all over Gaza killed 40 unarmed people in just one day.